Yes, it's my old boots again, and no, I don't have a thing for boots. Instead, come over to our layers palette. I've renamed these to underlying layer and top layer. That will become apparent. Underlying layer, that's my normal layer. The top layer, if you take a look at it, I've up the contrast, I've up the color, so it's very definitely different. It needs to be because I want to show you all about layer blend ranges. So just come up to here where it says blend ranges and click and I get this. I've got two dialog boxes. Now the best way to think of these is like having two curved dialog boxes next to each other, but without the histogram in the background showing you the dark and light, because that's what you've got in each. You've got dark, light, same here, dark and light. And you've got this bar on top of each of them. Now at the moment, they're on 100%. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's take this box first, the underlying composition ranges. Well, that refers to my underlying layer, that more muted, grayed out area. And the source layer, well, that's the one which is highlighted. That's my much more vibrant layer. At the moment, it's on completely 100%. But just supposing I take one of these points and I drag it down, watch what happens. Now take a look at the picture. This is the dark region, this is the light region, and this is your midpoint. Now, if you're looking carefully, you'll notice that the lighter areas of the picture have become more knocked back, but the darker areas of the picture, like here, they're as strong as they ever were. And these midtones are all partially affected, so what's going on? This line controls the opacity of the source layer, or my topmost vibrant layer. So what I've done here is, for the black areas, they're on 100%. The darker areas are all the darker areas are all still pretty high, but as it gets more and more towards white and the lighter areas, you're getting less transparency for that layer. So eventually by the time you get to white, this layer is completely transparent. Look, I can add another point and I can drag that around. So now only the very darkest areas of the top layer are showing through and any of the lighter areas in what you're seeing here are belonging more to the underlying layer. Now you can make this like a graph or you can click linear and you get a curve for a more smooth effect. Or you can add multiple points. So you start to get some rather strange things going on. Okay. So now we've got a rather strange effect where all the darker, the most, the blackest areas belong to the top more vibrant layer. Quickly, by the time you get down to 25% gray, they all belong to the underlying layer. So these kind of dark ish tones are all showing through. Then let's take this one, let's take that and at 50% brightness, it goes back. So all the mid-tones, the bang on mid-tones are all belonging to the top vibrant layer and so on and so forth. All this is, is a way of taking two different layers and deciding which bits of either layer you get to see based on how dark or light the layers are. You start trying to do two graphs at the same time, it gets very confusing very quickly. I, I find that very difficult to try and figure out, well, okay, at this particular point, I've got hardly any of the underlying layers showing through, but on um, the same point on the other one, I've got just under half the top layer showing through. That gets complicated. So what I would recommend is come back to this and press backspace to get rid of it and Leave that be until you're very confident that you know what you're doing with this and just concentrate on the source layer. Incidentally, okay, you can see this one's selected because it's hollowed out. It's got a black middle. If you want to get rid of a point, press backspace. Don't press delete. Watch what happens when I press delete. The entire layer disappears. So Command Z to get rid of that. And just tweak around your heart's content. You can get some quite sharp stepping effects like this. All depends what you want to do. You can see on the image you're getting slightly posterized effects here. So you've got up to 25%
dark, you've got all the dark tones, then it suddenly clicks. So from 25% to about 50%, you've got all the underlying layer. Then at 50% through to 100%, you've got the more vibrant layer showing through again. Once you figure out that all you're doing is using a graph to control which parts of a layer are visible based on how dark or light they are, it all becomes pretty straightforward. All right, next up we are going to talk about layer blend modes. And they are seriously powerful and they are nowhere near as complicated or as hard to remember as most people think. So let's go take a look at those now.